Good day and thank you for joining us here. Uh, I'm with Shane Whedon, who's a global leader in IBM within the cybersecurity arena, specifically in access management. And I'm Chris Hawkins. I'm the CTO for IBM Security here in Australia, New Zealand. Today, uh, we're going to talk about FIDO, of course, um, in Australia and give a bit of an IBM perspective. So I'm going to run through some of the local, I guess, uh, market drivers um, before uh, Shane take you, takes us through some of the work he's specifically been doing in this domain uh, here in Australia. One of the unique things about IBM Australia and in this region, in fact, I know you're coming from Asia Pacific, we have labs uh, also around the region. But in Australia, we actually have a research and development facility that specifically owns um, one part or a couple of parts of our global R&D uh, capability in cybersecurity. And we know that cybersecurity is a global problem uh, that's often, you know, always felt uh, within the local market. And that's our clients, ourselves as individuals, you know, and governments respond to that uh, in certain ways uh, through compliance mandates, et cetera. So, you know, IBM Security is a large global pr provider. And yeah, here in Australia, we have this, uh, you know, capability where we build these products and export globally. Uh, so we're going to use, talk about some of that in the session uh, today. And I'm lucky enough in the market to represent some of this capability in our go-to-market. So if we look at Australia, what we found in a bunch of different uh, surveys this year and experiences is that uh, I guess the first statistic here that comes up on this slide is the fact that people during the pandemic, given that we were starting to have to work from home, things we used to do physically uh, by going to the stores and doing it ourselves, we were being pushed online. And what that meant was people were having to create a lot more accounts, right? And often with those accounts, it's new passwords. And we know that uh, lots of passwords have been breached, billions of those in the past. So the likelihood is that if you're using a, a password and you're suffering fatigue, um, which happened uh, during the pandemic, given the number of accounts that we had to create, we found that in this particular survey that 65% of people either used a mix of their old credentials on sites or they mostly or always reuse those credentials. So we have a big problem where people's, uh, people are becoming fatigued and they're reusing these passwords that may already be known. And what we do know also during the pandemic is that the attackers also targeted individuals and many of us were in a state of mind where we were in need so that we saw these COVID related spam campaigns specifically targeting not just Canada in this example, I didn't have a screenshot for the Australian one, but we know that banks in Australia, uh, financial institutions, individuals were targeted so that attackers could exploit our weaknesses, personal weaknesses, and get on our computers and steal money uh, from us. So there was an increase in threat activity. Um, there was a lot of, uh, you know, um, fatigue around password management itself. Uh, and we saw different incidents. And whilst the ANU example that I give below is an example of the past, what we, and there was many parts to this particular kill chain, which was quite painful for the university. And the, these findings are public. Uh, one of the things that the attacker did was use password cracking tools uh, to elevate privilege, to get access to content that they would, unauthor, would, would be otherwise unauthorized, of course, uh, to, to, to do. And, and they extracted information and then um, you know, had that available uh, in a public forum. So very embarrassing as well that password management or strong authentication could have been a remediating factor in addressing that. And if you look at the cybersecurity strategy within Australia, there are two, well, there are multiple departments, of course, involved, but two specifically that are looking at FIDO or different elements of FIDO to address uh, either risks or to drive best practices. And uh, in the first example, uh, the DTA uh, really quote, I mean, in our strategy, uh, trusted digital identities promote cybersecurity in our actual 2020 strategy uh, published by the Prime Minister last year. Uh, but the, part, the, the Digital Transformation Authority runs digital identity and they specifically refer to uh, FIDO uh, in their specifications around biometric, adoption of biometric solutions. And the area that that's relevant is that what the TDIF framework does is it allows organizations to be onboarded as either registration or registered but also then be authentication providers uh, for access into uh, the government uh, single sign-on solution so this is for all citizens um, 
And as you can imagine during the pandemic, it was a key underpinning uh, capability that allowed us as individuals to do business with the government in times where we may not have ever had to before. And also most recently, it's underpinning uh, the way that our country, our nation is opening up um, with, with our ability to prove vaccination status. The second one, which is really ASD, and this is uh, the uh, and ACSC being the authority who uh, is public, pu publicly facing, providing advice, uh, you know, sharing threat information. Uh, they have a, this notion of an essential eight, which is a set of guidelines, um, uh, a framework uh, for uh, verifying your maturity uh, around cybersecurity controls. Uh, and obviously, obviously there's eight of them and MFA features uh, in that particular specification. And we know that you know, from level zero, level one, level two, at level two, that's when we start to introduce uh, some of the remediating controls um, that FIDO um, can specifically help with uh, around multi-factor, sorry, biometric authentication as, I, as I've talked about um, before. Uh, and also uh, adds privileged user access as something where MFA should be applied. They also publish a guide, um, an MFA guide for implementers, uh, and they specify that only uh, use security keys in this particular solution or approach that have been certified to the latest U2F specification version. So, you know, across government, as the government matures, we're seeing, you know, an open mind engagement. I know that. Um, they're also involved in the FIDO Alliance uh, directly as well, I remember. Uh, just in terms of deployments, we know, if I start on the right-hand side, uh, we had uh, Dayon as a provider present to this forum uh, previously on the incorporation of UAF into the MyTelstra app, and that's a screenshot of uh, my app. Uh, I can tell you that I never log into it. Um, it's, it's always available, so under, under the covers, Obviously, some specifications being implemented there. On the left-hand side, uh, eBay as a member of the FIDO Alliance um, with WebAuthn for uh, continuous re-authentication from browsers uh, is implementable and, and available to Australia. And in the middle, I guess, when I look at a corporate perspective, IBM provides services across cybersecurity for many, many different uh, banks uh, and government entities. Uh, and, you know, they're looking at this problem uh, through a cybersecurity lens. Of course, there's protective mechanisms in, in, that they can consider and FIDO is, is one that they're, they're going on the journey um, with us in, in some instances. Um, and obviously then there's also this notion that detection and response uh, with fraud analytics is, is key to this um, remediating some of these or providing countermeasures for some of these um, particular threats. So with that, uh, having described some of the areas that the government is driving in terms of um, maturity and compliance, some of the areas you know customers are looking at in the enterprise space, I'm going to hand over to Shane Whedon, who will take us through some of the areas that he and his team has been specifically investing their time and energy to uh, within the global domain, and how those are relevant uh, right here as well. Thanks, Chris, and uh, thanks everyone for the opportunity to share with you today some of the things that my team and I in IBM Australia have been uh, doing and contributing back to the, the community and the, the standards organisations. Uh, I'm also going to take some time to take you through some uh, an example deployment that I think you'll find interesting as well. So as part of my role in IBM, and I'm a, I'm a contributing member to the FIDO Alliance and also the W3C via the WebAuthn specification. For those not familiar, uh, the FIDO Alliance kicked off this entire strong authentication uh, you know, technology. Uh, the W3C was engaged to develop an API for browser vendors to implement to make the adoption of this technology easier for, for um, people who are trying to expose strong authentication on the web. Uh, I've personally been involved in all sorts of different activities, including several white papers in both the consumer and enterprise spaces. But I'm going to talk today about some of the lesser known contributions that, you know, that we, the team and I are quite proud of and that we hope you'll find interesting as well. So I'm going to start first with a, a site that we host 
Uh, it's available most of the time and you're welcome to go and try it. It's called howtofido.securityposc.com. And it's an implementation of a set of ideas that originally came out of a paper from Google called How to Fido. Uh, the, the notion was that Fido as a technology has many different ways to adopt it. And, and so this paper was written to publish three key adoption patterns or ways in which uh, Fido might be exposed. And uh, one of those uh, is the is is the example that you can see on eBay today, where the uh, authenticators built into your devices, like uh, Windows Hello via a TPM, and also say Touch ID on my MacBook here might be used to re-authenticate to eBay. Um, there are other adoption patterns as well that are exposed on this site, and uh, I've included links here to both the original specification of how to photo and also the site that you can go on. Uh, we can go and try it out. Uh, another one that we've been involved in recently, over, particularly over the last uh, six to 12 months, is the uh, FIDO UX guidelines. So the FIDO UX working group or task force was formed, um, several members of the Alliance uh, got together and worked also with some outside companies doing user experience testing, uh, gathering feedback on what worked and what didn't work and came up with a set of UI guidelines for how to expose photo on a website. And these are gonna undergo refinement over time as, as the technology evolves as well. But uh, one of the things that we personally did out of this lab is build the digital bank-test.com site where this experience can be uh, seen and tried for yourself. So, the link to the guidelines are there, as well as the link to the test site, uh, which is up most of the time, uh, where you can go and try that experience out and, and see, uh, you know, if you like it. And finally, uh, the one I want to talk about as well is in my involvement in the development of the WebAuthn specification. So I'm a member of the W3C WebAuthn working group. Uh, we meet at a time that's mostly convenient. Uh, quite early in the morning to satisfy the global the global team involved, and uh, we develop the uh, ongoing development of the specification for uh, browsers to expose uh, authentication um, via a JavaScript API that, that is the WebAuthn API. My representation is uh, as a as a consumer of that API. So there's lots of different people involved in that specification development. Some are uh, browser vendors. They have a, a fairly big um, part to play because they implement the specification. Some are authenticator vendors. Uh, these are the people that build security keys and other, other modalities of uh, strong authenticator um, devices that people interact with. And the third major role is that of relying parties or sites that expose uh, experiences to consume strong authentication via WebAuthn. And that's really my area of focus is I wanna make sure the API is usable and that we can expose the types of experiences that, that uh, companies want to deliver to their, their end users. Uh, a little bit about IBM and its own FIDO involvement and, de and development. So back in the middle of 2018 at the San Jose Hilton, in a basement room. Um, I was uh, pleased to be able to bring our server to that, uh, the very first photo to interop and certification event. And, um, you know, we, we started our implementation sometime before that. Uh, and since then, not only have we, you know, achieved that certification and, and rolled it into our offerings, we've also uh, contributed back via a uh, somewhat geeky test site called fidointerop.securitypc.com, a, uh, a website that exposes our server. And we've made that available for future certification and conformance events. And I'm often involved with authenticator vendors and others uh, to help them test out their offerings. And I also use that site to expose the very latest in specification uh, evolution in WebAuthn. So it's a little bit more volatile in terms of availability and, and what it does. But if you're at the very pointy end of this technology and specification development, uh, it might be a site that is of interest to you. Now, a quick plug for what we've been doing in the market with our capabilities. Uh, IBM has had access management product 
for more than 20 years. It's actually how Chris and I came into IBM via an acquisition back in uh, 2000. So uh, that product is in its latest incantation. It's called IBM Security Verify Access. It's an on-premise deployment. We have a cloud-based SaaS offering called IBM Security Verify SaaS. Uh, that's a little, that's newer than, it's uh, been around for a few years now, but quite a lot newer than our on-premises offering. But what I really want to talk to you about today is the stuff on the right, our um, recently released mobile SDK. Now, this is not something you pay for. It's not something that, you know, you have you, you have a license for. It's not something we even, um, uh, you know, offer uh, support for in a traditional sense because we've completely open sourced this library. What this library is about is it's, uh, for us, it's about exposing a WebAuthn like API to satisfy the needs of pure native mobile app developers on iOS. So Apple have their own exposed uh, APIs and patterns for, for consuming uh, photo authentication. And uh, some of those we found uh, require transitioning of screens to Apple controlled screens and so on. And they, they uh, weren't quite satisfying the needs that our customers were telling us about what, that they need for a, a pure native mobile app. And as a result, we've put together this fairly lightweight SDK. It's really a wrapper around some uh, CryptoKit APIs, but we've tried to expose the a set of APIs that we think our customers will, will really like in terms of exposing native experience whilst um, handling all of the photo technical payloads underneath the covers. So if you're an iOS developer, we would encourage you to check that out out and provide feedback on GitHub to us. And finally, I want to talk about a use case today. Uh, this is one near and dear to my heart. It's a, it's a deployment of Fido for employees inside of IBM. I'm going to walk quickly through what the experience looks like. And then I've got a couple of uh, demo videos, one for Mac and one for Windows that just sort of show the experience in real time that uh, you can have a look at. So this is the basic workflow. From an unauthenticated state, I access an app and I'm taken to an intranet uh, federated identity provider where I have to log in. Now, um, having previously registered a FIDO authenticator, in this case, I'm talking about the platform authenticators like uh, touch bar, my touch bar on my Mac or Windows Hello with uh, fingerprint, face recognition, or you know, even a PIN. Uh, I can use those very natural, familiar, easy to use authentication experiences to log into intranet as an employee. And um, one of the things you'll notice is we customize the experience a little bit based on your platform. So based on whether you're on, you know, a Mac and, and uh, there's a, bit of, a little bit of browser detection in there to account for different levels of maturity and browser implementations of WebAuthn, we give you an experience that should be familiar to you on your platform. Uh, and uh, in the case of, of uh, Chrome on the Mac, I have an identity chooser. Uh, and I will have two in Windows if I have more than one account registered, and then I, I'll, I'm logged into the target app. It's that it's quite simple. So I'll just show you what those experiences look like in a, in a moment here, just to give you some idea on the size of this deployment. It it's not um, not every employee is forced to enrol in it. It's opt in, uh, and at the moment we have across um, IBM and Kindrel uh, just under sixty thousand enrolments, and um, the. Besides the experience you're going to see here with the platform authenticator um, doing completely passwordless login, we also support uh, the concept of using a, a uh, security key for passwordless login. If, it, if it's a, a security key, a modern one that supports uh, WebAuthn and, and FIDO2, or even if you've got an older style uh, U2F only security key, we support that as a multi-factor mechanism as well. So uh, just let's just have a look at those experiences. And I'll start here with uh, the experience I have every day, which is Chrome on my Mac. I access the app. I'm taken to my portal. I touch my touch bar, uh, confirm my account, and I'm logged into the target application. That was the entire experience from beginning to end. And uh, I guess that's my initials up there. Similarly, on Windows, if I access the app and say, yes, I'm logging in, uh, I'm taken to Windows Hello. I look at my camera, press OK, and that's it. I'm logged into the target app. That type of experience can be um, added to 
uh, your website reasonably easily. And this is a uh, complete rip and replace of your existing authentication experience. It's a um, it's complementary. And with that, I think um, we're done here. So I'd just like uh, one quick takeaway, and that is that strong authentication is important. Uh, we have expertise here in the region, and we um, we're really excited to talk to you about it. Uh, if you want to know anything from you know commercial information to the technical details of the specification, Chris and I are here to help. Please come and talk to us. Thank you.